<laughs> um, yeah, when we first designed the Monk, actually, we started with no weapons for exactly that reason. We're like, okay, let's, let's, let's look at this as a totally different kind of class. Let's see what we can do with no weapons. Um, obviously, you need weapons because you need the item game. You need to be able to upgrade and all that stuff. But we wanted to, you know, approach it a little bit differently than we had in the past. But what we found was that it really didn't start hitting what we thought of as the monk until we gave him those weapons. Um, kind of like the uh, assassin in D2, um, the monk is actually much more defined by his weapons than any other class. You know, the, the uh, assassin had her javelin, the crossbow, you know, she was so much defined by that. The monk, he has right now, for instance, when he uses his staff, he has, he, his skills use very sweeping motions. He has some fist weapons right now. He does very, you know, jabby, quick motions. Uh, more than any other class, his, his, uh, the weapons that he has in his hands are going to define a lot of the skills that he uses. Um, so while he might, this remains to be seen, but he might not have as big a ray of weapons, but they'll have a bigger effect on different things he can do. So it's kind of a mix and match. Um, does that answer your question? Do you want to add anything to that? Next question. Hello. Uh, I like the game really much, and I have a question for you. Um, there was a question if the game was going to be d as dark and, and fantasy as, a, as the first one and the second one. Are we going to see that kind of dark style again in, in this game as an option or as an idea? Because uh, there was a concept art, you know, it was really dark, and so I don't know, if it was, it was like exceptional or not. So when you say dark, do you mean like we turn all the lights off or somber content? Like it's in more terror, scary, like you, things pop in, that, in and out. You can't, don't even expect it. Well, we do feel like we're going in that direction. I mean, if you notice the monk announcement, the, the kind of whole section with the cult and them destroying a whole town, if you go and play the demo and you find that town, it's covered in bodies that have been sacrificed and, um, and some pretty dark stuff. So, yeah, tone-wise, tone we intend to be just as dark as the previous games. Um, in terms of the art style, we are looking for something more vibrant, but something that also still feels like a mature game. Does that answer your question? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, we only have time for a couple more questions. Hi, um, I got a question about the uh, monk combo system. Can you uh, ca cancel a combo like midway, like you just keep on dashing and not, not do any other skill? The, uh, the way it's currently set up, and, and this is you know, under development, so we're constantly iterating on it, but uh, we experimented with different times where, where basically the time between your first click and your second click, whether or not it changes. I think right now it's like 0 0.6 seconds. It was about the right length. So if you click and you dash, and then you pause, and let a second pass by, and then you click, you will get the dash again. And so it's really uh, just you know, constantly clicking is what advances the sequence. Next question. Is boss farming still going to be like huge? Like you keep going kill and bail over and over again. And when I go fight people like uh, Duriel, if I don't have any frost resistance, am I going to get dropped? Oh, never mind. <laughs> go ahead. I'll get I'll get that. <laughs> I'll um, stay away from that. Let's see. Um, so it's. Uh, the frost resistant question is kind of a, a hard one because we haven't gotten that far in boss design. I have a feeling we won't go that route where we have you force you into that specific an item set. But that's really going to come probably later in our development. But I will say that um, the farming of, care of bosses. Um, Bosses are where the best items are, so players are going to go and kill those bosses. The problem with Diablo 2's in game was that um, there was a one, one size fits all, one right answer almost all the time. Now that changed throughout the game's life, but pretty much there was always a run that either because it was fast or because of the quality of what came off the boss, it was the best run to do. So our goal will be to follow the model of some other games, and I actually look at World of Warcraft for this and their quest system, and diversify the way you play through in-game content, such that, yes, you'll still be doing runs, but you're not going to be doing the exact same run over and over and over again until your eyes bleed. 
So we do have plans for that. We ha it's not something we can talk about yet, but we definitely are going to try and address that issue. And I think as far as bosses, you don't have any uh, here we obviously we're not going to address them. That was the Diablo panel at BlizzCon 2009, and we've got 26,000 hardcore Blizzard fans here at the Anaheim Convention Center for BlizzCon. They're dressed up in their costumes, they're experiencing all the activities, and most of all, they're playing the brand new games, Diablo 3, StarCraft 2, and the newly announced World of Warcraft Cataclysm. It's all coming to fans of Blizzard, and we are here with an amazing cast of characters. You're going to see all these guys later tonight at the costume contest live on on direct TV, but right now we are here inside Hall C at the Convention Center. I'm Jeff Keeley along with Kat Hunter, bringing you a lot of more updates on BlizzCon 2009. And we have a special guest with us, Kat, right? We do. We have Frank Pierce here. But before we get to Frank Pierce, I just want to make sure that I tell everyone that, you know, we learned a lot about Diablo just then, and there's a lot more coming up on the show. But if you want to learn even more, be sure to check out IGN.com for reviews, previews, and all videos of the game. Excellent. Frank, welcome Frank, to our co stage. Co-founder of Blizzard. How are you, Frank? It's <laughs> good to see well. you again. Thank this you. Year. How are you guys? Good. Cool. We're good. So tell us a bit about your role here at BlizzCon. Obviously, the entire company comes together to put BlizzCon together. But what's your role here? You're going to be on a couple yeah, of panels, it's right? A, it's a huge undertaking. I don't. I don't have to sit on any panels. We have you other people. No. Uh, we have other people that are uh, better equipped with information to deliver that information to the attendees. Um, I didn't have to participate in the opening ceremony. Uh, Mike and Chris took this care of that. This was really your only obligation. Uh, I, have, right here. I have an obligation to be at the Direct TV stage today, and an obligation to be at the Direct TV stage tomorrow. Uh, I'll be partaking in uh, uh, all the festivities. Right, I love the costume contest. Right. Um, I saw Ozzy doing his sound check Looked last awesome, night, right? and he sounded absolutely incredible. Um, the band sounds incredible. Uh, I can't wait for the concert tomorrow night. I know. Uh, and you also get to, uh, you told me you were watching Mike's interview upstairs on DirecTV. You watched yes, BlizzCon last backstage. year on DirecTV, right? I was backstage uh, this morning when you guys did your, your DirecTV interview with Mike. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, in between the media interviews that, that I'm obligated to do, which I, I love doing those too, but I just like to walk around the show floor. I mean, I've got friends and family here uh, from locally as well as guild mates from traveled in internationally and so it's an opportunity for me to interact with the fans but also uh, the people that are part of my social experience when i'm playing world of warcraft sure. well, a big part of blizzcon are the opening announcements like you just said and there were a lot of leaks that came out this year i mean one of the questions we had in our community was how hard is it to you know be 100 percent clean and not have anything come out of here because that, that definitely is something that you have a big hand in yeah it's something that we try very very hard to achieve and it's something that's very very difficult to do well right. um, we have a headcount at blizzard of almost 4,000 employees worldwide now um, we employ about 1200 people in irvine you know 500 or so are involved in product development directly and then we've got our quality assurance groups and, and a lot of other groups that are really critical to what we're doing in irvine right. and you know we we want to keep everything you know as, as top secret as we can until we can unveil it to the public in grand fashion. Yeah. Um, but there's just, we've got so much stuff that we're dealing with and so much information that we're trying to manage. It's, it's almost impossible to do it flawlessly. And, you know, I know there was, uh, there's a lot of data mining that takes place with the, the data files on World of Warcraft. They're and I know the community <laughs> managed to mine some Halloween masks that right. were uh, Goblin and Worgen Halloween masks. And yeah. so there was immediate speculation that those were the new races for the new expansions. And so my reaction to that was, well, throw some more Halloween masks in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> before we could right? even do that, one of the fan sites was expe said, expect. Uh, expect to see more Halloween masks in the next, next version of the patch to cover right. up the mm. whether or not that's that. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were onto that before we even did it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's a blessing, really, because it's an indication of how passionate our community is right. about our games and about the content that we're working on and everything that we're doing. And so, yeah, we work really hard to try to keep it a secret. But, I mean, uh, everyone had insight into uh, everyone that was really hardcore. And, following the rumors on the internet, had some insight into what the next WoW expansion would be. We dealt with the same thing two BlizzCons ago when we announced Wrath of the Lich King. Right. And it's just it's just something that, that we're, we've got to get used to. It is what it is, and it's just of indicative of, very, of a very passionate community. So after doing so many Blizzard games for so many years, 
What excites you about some of the games that are, are coming out in the future? I mean, what, what still gets you up in the morning and excited about the future of where Blizzard can take gaming next? Say that again. What excites you about where gaming can go next? You've, got, you've done so many Blizzard.